get mantra and meditation mp3s at jasongalant.ca. There's a misconception that spirituality and enlightenment is about peace. Now you will realize peace through falling into or back into who you truly are. Because the infinite is everything. There is no other besides the infinite in this realization. So how can there be conflict if there's only one? Now where the confusion comes in is when people move into physical reality. Where they're like, there's only one, I'll walk into traffic, the car won't hit me. Because <laughs> that would be conflict. That won't happen. <laughs> because this reality, this, this place of ego and the expression of ego is all about contrast and polarity. Light and dark. Life and death. It's all the physical reality, right? So spirituality, the goal of it isn't to forget the physical but to realize that which is the background of this entire drama that has always been there. And when you remember that, there is this solace that is realized, this peace that is realized amidst the overwhelming conflict of life. So you see, it's not about avoiding conflict, because so often, conflict is just based on the perception of the person at the time. When I used to personal train people, <laughs> they'd come to the gym and they'd see nothing but conflict. They're like, oh, my legs are burning. Man, my butt hurts, you know, <laughs> from training so hard. That was nothing but conflict, but conflict can be positive. And conflict so often has everything to do with the evolution of the ego. And that's really what we are bringing enlightenment to. So often I speak about surrender, being with whatever is happening, whether it's pleasure or pain. And as you remember this infinite being that you are, as you are with the polarities, a magical experience happens. These energies of contrast, of conflict, dissolve into you and become the power, the light, the movement. This is why when you invoke Shakti or spiritual energy through mantra practice, the more powerful practices a lot of times will bring massive amounts of conflict. But how can this be true? How can this be true if enlightenment is just about peace? Well, as the separate you moves towards the infinite you, the I is discarded, and this is the greatest conflict. Conflict itself is the death of the ego. Death seems like conflict to the ego, right? It's pretty obvious. So obviously you cannot avoid conflict if evolution is what you seek. Another way to look at it is a butterfly when it's a caterpillar and it's in a cocoon. There is a lot of conflict as it breaks free of that cocoon to be a butterfly. So as you evolve, as you let go of the past you, you go through a death process, a Shiva-like process, and then burst forth with the new ego that continues, the death life, death life, death life, death life. This, this life and death thing happens as you spiritually progress, as you perform these spiritual practices. Don't be surprised if there is conflict along the way as you let go of the past you's attachments. Some of them are in the form of relationship. 
the, those relationships may have served the past you, but maybe they no longer serve the new you. It doesn't mean that there isn't love in all of it. It's just that you are expanding into something even greater. You see, you weren't born to hold on. How many things in your life have you had to let go of along the way? Detachment isn't an idealism. It is something that just naturally happens. In the end, you have to detach from the physical body. You have to let it go. So how does it make sense that you need to hold on to all of the relationships and associations that the physical body made during this lifetime. So you see, the great yogis didn't make these things up. They didn't make this concept up like a religion. They just watched. They watched reality before them. They watched it unfold neutrally and realized certain phenomena took place. Surrendering to these phenomena assisted with suffering. It assisted with one not experiencing suffering as existence took place. But don't worry, it seems negative only to the present ego. But the new ego will manifest things of even greater, unconditional, loving, fulfilling experiences. These experiences have a higher vibration than the previous conditional experiences. It's like if you're a child and you have an ice cream cone and then somebody comes along with three scoops instead of one. <laughs> but you first have to let go of that first ice cream cone before someone will give you the next one, right? Mm -hmm. So the evolution part is painful at times. There can be emotions, there can be conflicts, there can be arguments, there can be a lot of disagreements. But this is part of it. As you suddenly wake up amidst something and find out, hey, this is no longer serving me, trust that. As long as you're being authentic and not projecting echoes of suffering upon this situation, this will take you to new territory. This will take you to your next spiritual evolution, your next spiritual expression. So I hope this helps you on your spiritual journey. Take care for now. Are you interested in working with a spiritual teacher in a formal setting? Well, perhaps the Wisdom Life School is for you. If you're interested in checking out what the Wisdom Life School is all about, just go to aratima.com.